Hello and welcome to this week's news bulletin from the Christian Institute. Proposals by the government's embryology regulator to create genetically modified babies with three or four biological parents should be rejected, according to a leading bioethics expert. Dr. Callum McKellar has written a report outlining his concerns, saying that the techniques being discussed may carry medical risks for children and for future generations. He says the plans also raise profound ethical questions about the destruction of embryos in research. Those in favour of the plans say the aim is to avoid mitochondrial diseases being passed from mother to child. But Dr McKellar says alternative ways of doing that are already being pursued by scientists and they are far less controversial. The report aims to help Christians understand the issues involved and can be viewed in full on our website at christian.org.uk. Pressure is mounting on the government to reform a controversial law which criminalises insulting words or behaviour. Parliament's influential Joint Committee on Human Rights have added their voice to calls for the word insulting to be removed from Section 5 of the Public Order Act during the passage of the Crime and Courts Bill. Their report says criminalising insulting words or behaviour constitutes a disproportionate interference with freedom of expression. This week also saw the chairman of the Equality and Human Rights Commission, Baroness O'Nora O'Neill, backing the reform, saying that a change in the law is vital to protect free speech. Head teachers in Sweden have been told they can take pupils to Christmas services in church, but Jesus cannot be mentioned. Advent services are part of the curriculum, but religious content has been ruled out by education officials. They said prayer, blessings or declarations of faith are all banned. But government ministers in Sweden have criticised the decision. Education Minister Jan Björklund said pastors should be able to read the Christmas gospel, refer to the Bible and explain why we celebrate this Christian holiday. And Christian Democrat leader Goran Haglund said there is no reason to protect our children from our traditions and our cultural heritage. The Prime Minister David Cameron is facing rebellion by his own MPs over government plans to redefine marriage. So far, 118 Tory MPs, including some senior ministers, have publicly stated their opposition to the plans. It is thought that many more MPs are likely to oppose the policy if it comes to a vote, but have not as yet stated their position publicly. Hundreds of parents in Lanarkshire have signed a petition calling for an explicit sex education video to be removed from the classroom. The Living and Growing DVD, produced by Channel 4, was withdrawn from sale following a campaign from MPs and parents, but is still being shown in primary schools. Many parents say they were not made fully aware of the nature of the film, parts of which were aimed at children as young as five. Journalists working for the Associated Press have been warned not to use the word homophobia in their reports because it is inaccurate. The new rules suggest that it is wrong to assume that someone is suffering from a phobia just because they disagree with homosexual behaviour. The style guide from AP reporters has been updated to say phobia, an irrational, uncontrollable fear, often a form of mental illness, should not be used in political or social contexts, including homophobia. AP Deputy Standards Editor Dave Minthorn said, Homophobia especially, it's just off the mark. It's ascribing a mental disability to someone and suggests a knowledge that we don't have. Four schools in America face court action unless they agree to put a children's storybook about lesbian mums back on library shelves. The book, In Our Mother's House, was removed from libraries in the Davis School District in Utah because of parental objections. The American Civil Liberty Union, which backs same-sex marriage, has threatened to sue the schools. However, the school district is sticking to its decision, saying that parents should be in the driving seat. The book is still available on request, but students need permission from their parents to take it out. And in the UK, school lessons on Christianity can be incoherent and lacking academic challenge, a University of Oxford lecturer has warned. Dr Nigel Fancourt made the remarks in relation to a new project he is leading, which is looking at how Christianity is taught in schools. He commented, The fact that basics are often already vaguely familiar to some teachers and pupils means it can present problems. The presentation of Christianity can be incoherent, lacking in intellectual development or too stereotypical. And the YouGov poll commissioned for the project has revealed the majority of people think children need to learn about Christianity in schools in order to understand English history and culture. 
Dr. Fancourt acknowledged that there were some schools where vibrant Christian teaching is taking place and that the Christian tradition also opens for young people a source of lifelong spiritual enrichment. Well, that's all for this week. For more information and regular updates on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.